OK, so let's make ourselves a normal distribution sampling spreadsheet, a simulator for us to sample from a normal distribution. So we're going to start with some parameters for my normal distribution. So my population, her population, is going to go over here. The mean, which is mu, has to be, what does it have to be? Oh, it can be anything I like. So I'm going to start with 100. And the standard deviation, sigma, is defined to be, what's it going to be? Um, 20. It doesn't matter what you put here. You can put your own different numbers if you want to. I'm going to use these to generate a whole stack of random numbers. So my actual population values are going to go here. Now each one of them I'm going to generate with a fancy formula. I want to refer to my mean and my standard deviation. I don't want to have to keep typing cell references and worrying about dollar signs to stop them from being copy wrong. So I'm going to give a name to this cell. I'm going to call it population mean. And I'm going to call this cell population standard deviation. So again, you click on it and you click up here and you go population standard deviation. And so now those are the names up here. Those are the names of these two cells. So I can refer to them in formulas. So what I'm going to do is make a random number. But if I just generate a normal random number, I'm going to get it with rand. I get a number, oh, it was telling me, I get a number between 0 and 1. And it's uniformly distributed. So what I'm going to do is turn that, I'm going to use that as a quantile and use the inverse normal function to generate a normally distributed number. So I'm going to go inverse normal. Oh, sorry, I have to go normal inverse, right? Inverse normal function. Uh, the probability was a random number between 0 and 1. The mean was my population mean. Notice, once you start typing, it comes up. You can just press Tab to complete. And it will actually highlight the cell for you, so you know you've typed it right. And the standard deviation was the population standard deviation. So that is an inverse normal from a uniformly distributed random number from 0 to 1. So that's my quantile, and turned back into a normally distributed number. If I press enter, now so far I have just one number here. That's one randomly distributed number, but one number by itself isn't doesn't really give me much of a population. So I'm going to drag this bottom right little square down, and I'm going to drag it down a long way. Now you can choose how many random numbers you want in your population. I don't care, it doesn't matter. So there are all my random numbers. Right? They are normally distributed with this mean and this standard deviation. Now, of course, their actual mean and their actual standard deviation won't be exactly this because they're random numbers, but they were distributed like this. Now, of course, I actually want to refer to these numbers again many times, so I'm going to give that section, of that range of numbers a name. Click on the top one, and if you press Control and Shift and Down, it'll go all the way to the bottom of the range. Then I'm going to call that population. Okay, that is my population of numbers. I'm curious. I'm going to work out what its mean is and what its standard deviation is. So I'm going to go equals the mean. Uh, Excel calls the mean the average, and it's the average. What are the numbers? It's my population, and that's all I have to do. Notice when I type the, the name population it actually highlights the whole range. If I press Enter, that's my mean of that population. Every time I press F9, it'll regenerate all those numbers for me. If you don't like pressing F9, you can go up here to... It's under Formula. If you go to Formula, there's a Calculate Now button. You can see it tells you it's F9. And if you press that button, it'll recalculate all the numbers. Because they're random numbers, they get generated automatically again every time it happens. And of course, each time it happens, I'm getting a different actual mean, but that's OK. Let's have a check here also. What's the standard deviation of those numbers? Excel calls that standard deviation, stdev. And again, I'm going to go dot .p for population, and my set of numbers is the population. 
and every time I do it I should get pretty close to 120, but it won't be exactly the same. OK, I'm generating a population. What I want to do is generate a sample from that. So let's go across to my sample. All right. Now, my sample is going to come from here. But to get there, I'm going to go around a little bit differently. I'm going to say it'll go like this. I'm going to pick randomly a set of rows, a set of numbers from here, but I'm going to pick them by their location and then pull out the values. So I'm going to go position and then value. The position of each one is going to be a random number between 1 and the number of numbers in my population. See how that formula worked? I'm going to get a random number between 1 and the number of numbers I have in my population. Actually, I've just thought about this. This count of the population is going to be useful many times. So let me put it over here. That was my population. I'm going to put a count value, which is the count of the population. Okay, then I'm going to use it there. So now I've got my count here. I'm going to give it a name, and that's actually, normally it's capital N. It's the number in the population. It's the population count. So then over here, I'm going to change this function. So it's going to be called population count. Okay, so I'm now generating a random number between 1 and population count. And I'm going to have a sample of, I don't know, 5 or something. You can change the size of your sample. Just drag that down a bit further if you want to, not a problem. Then, that's the number, that's the position I want from this group. How do I get the number out? I'm going to go equals index. From my population, I want this row number, this one here. And you can click on it, or move to it, or just type E5, it's up to you. And if I then close that and press Enter, that will give me the number at this position. So if I double click that little, block, little bottom right corner, I'll be pulling out the number at each of those random positions from my sample. And every time you recalculate, you'll get a different sample. And we're going to use that. Now what do I want to know about this sample? I want to know the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Well, that's just the average of these numbers. I'm going to be selecting those numbers a few times. Should I give it a name? Why don't I give it a name? I'm going to call that my sample. And then I'm going to go equals average of my sample. And that's the standard deviation of my sample. Now you will notice I used the population standard deviation here. You could use the sample standard deviation for our purposes in this subject. It's not going to make a lot of difference. I have a mean and a standard deviation of my sample. So let me add the size of the sample. That's little n, which is equal to the count of the sample. And that's 5, which is what I expected. And then what I want is sigma on root n. So writing that's going to be difficult. Um, what is it? It's the, sam it's the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample means. So it's not about the standard deviation of this sample. It's about the distribution of multiple samples of this. So it's s on root n. And it's equal to this standard deviation divided by, how do we get a square root? You type sqrt for the square root. And I want the square root of that number. So that's s on root n. So now I have a spreadsheet that every time I press F9, or the recalculate button under formulas, it's going to regenerate, it's going to have a new mean, and S on root n is going to be pretty similar each time. 
the question that we want to answer in this course is given this num given my sample I've taken, given its mean, what I really want is the actual population's mean. How close is this to this and how confident can I be that this is close to that? That's the question we want to look at using this spreadsheet.